Now, the next four principles that I'm going to give you are very important ones, and there are going to be four different ways of looking at the purpose of life. What is the purpose of life? So, the purpose of life, there's a lot we could say about this, and I've said stuff in the past about it, but basically, here are four different purposes of life. These are very overarching, big picture purposes, which help to orient you as to what you should be doing in your life. So, the first purpose of life is to raise your consciousness. That should be something that you're concerned with every single day of your life from now on. The second purpose of life is to raise your capacity to love. To embrace the full spectrum of experience, not just the good experiences and the sweet and pleasant ones, but everything. Raise your capacity to love everything and everyone. The third purpose of life is to take in the beauty of life. Have you noticed how beautiful it all is? But of course, there's also a spectrum of beauty. And it's very easy to, to see the beauty when you go to a museum and you look at a fine Picasso painting, or you go to some national park like Yosemite and you look at the beautiful mountains and trees and the sunset, and that's beautiful. That's the kind of beauty that's sort of easy to see. But can you see the beauty of everyday life, of the most mundane things? Can you see the beauty of your body, of your hands? Can you see the beauty on the wall? Can you see the beauty of that pencil, of that lamp, of the carpet, of this room, the beauty of society, the beauty of mankind, the beauty of, of even the ugly things? That really is, if you think about it, the essence of a good life. To live the greatest life possible is really just none other than to see beauty everywhere all the time and to be conscious of that. But you have to train yourself because society has trained you to be judgmental and to pick and choose and to not like the ugly stuff and to only like a like one percent of the full spectrum of all the stuff that there is to love. That requires surrendering your ego. See, the ego doesn't want to love and see the beauty of everything. It wants to cherry pick. And so your job is to surrender that more and more and more and to take in more of the beauty all the time. So that you don't have a day where you go by in your life where you're just going through the motions, just going to work, just punching the clock, just earning some money, just doing some business, just taking care of the kids, just cooking a meal, but you're disconnected from the beauty of it all. And that's what very careful observation and meditation will ultimately teach you, is they will teach you the beauty of the most simple things. Just like looking at your hands and seeing the enormous beauty in the design of your hands and how they function. You know, you can sit there for hours marveling at this, but only after enormous training. That doesn't come to you uh, from a diet of, of playing video games and watching Netflix for your whole life. You know, you're not going to be able to do that. It'll take years to untrain yourself from, from that Netflix video game diet to be able to see the beauty of, of very simple things. You know, the average person, when they're walking on the sidewalk and they see uh, some dog poo, they can't see the beauty in that. And you need to train yourself to see the beauty in that. And whatever it takes that you need to surrender to see the beauty in that, that's your work. That's one of your highest purposes in life. You know, I was driving yesterday late at night, like I like to do, I drive around uh, Las Vegas late at night, just looking at the, uh, at the lights and just contemplating and meditating while I drive. Actually, I love to meditate while I drive the most. And so I, I drive, I do this whole loop around Las Vegas. It takes about an hour and a half. Um, it's probably like 80 miles or so. Uh, I drive around the entire city late at night. And I was driving and then there was like some part on the road where I usually drive where there was like construction going on. And I got annoyed by that. I'm thinking like, oh, I got this peaceful drive and I have to deal with all this construction nonsense that's happening late at night. Um, but then I also realized like, oh, wait a minute. Why am I not taking in the beauty of all of this? I mean, it's beautiful. Like the construction signs are certain beauty to them and people working, you know, the way they're constructing this, this off ramp or on ramp or whatever it is. Like there's a certain beauty to that. And then, and then you kind of just see that, oh, this is society. It's sort of like almost like ants working on the little ant colony, you know, building something. 
uh, on the road. And so like you see that beauty, whereas normally I would get annoyed by that. Here I saw the beauty of it and uh, it completely transformed that experience. So you need to get good at doing that all the time in more and more difficult situations. You know, it's very difficult to see the beauty when you're dealing with a situation that is uh, affecting your survival needs. So that's where most spiritual work happens, right there. And the fourth purpose of life is to feel alive every day. To live proactively. To not have a single day where you're just, like I said, going through some boring motions, just kind of doing another typical day, just kind of phoning it in and being robotic to actually feel alive, that feeling of engagement. You want to be passionate and alive. So whatever that takes, if that takes you doing more travel, then do that. And if if that requires you have a better job in order to finance your travel, then do that. Um, but of course, to feel alive, also what that means is being more conscious, being less robotic and less mechanical in the way that you live. Uh, the next principle is to build your metaphysical connection to reality. I've talked about this explicitly in my video called What is Spirituality? So we can rephrase now this principle as just pursue spirituality or be spiritual. And what that means is developing your connection to reality, your metaphysical connection. Um, and what that means is that means realizing that you're not just some uh, creature, some mammalian meat bag, who is living on this rock that's rotating around the sun, but rather that you are the entire universe. You're not an object that is within existence. You are existence itself. To realize that I am the whole universe as I stand here, that is only possible through all of the metaphysical contemplations and various meditations that I have done for many, many years. And that is starting to develop within me, and it's only going to develop more and more and more. And the more that happens, the better your life becomes. Because now you feel like life is not just about living and surviving and doing chores for people, uh, but uh, it, it's it's really just about connecting more and more with yourself as the entire universe and being more conscious of that. 